What's up, all my folks out in YouTube land? Daryl, also known as The Finisher. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about handyman experience. But in the meantime, in the background, what you're also going to see is I'm going to transform this room a little bit. All these wires all over the place. It's ridiculous. So I'm going to put all the wires inside the wall. We're going to remount this TV. I'm going to do some crown molding in this room. I'm going to put some trim on the wall. Going to make it look nice and beautiful. A little coat of paint over the trim. The end of the result going to be a beautiful thing but the question of the day is what what is handyman experience i mean what actually counts as handyman experience there's way more to it than just knowing how to install a faucet to change a light fixture there's a whole lot of intangibles involved with this handyman business that you don't get from crawling around in someone's attic at least i didn't you get something from that but there's other things that you don't get from it don't discount the experiences that you had from past jobs no matter how far from this industry it was in that goes for anybody listening. I'm telling you, you can start your own business. I don't care right now if you're working in fast food, you're at a distribution center, door dashing. Man, you could be watching this video tied in the grocery store bathroom because you ain't trying to push another cart right there. I'm telling you, you have no idea how your past or current jobs are preparing you for the handyman business. Or maybe you do. For example, I'm part of the last group of kids that delivered newspapers, a paper boy. The, the la I mean, it was it was literally the last form of legal child labor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Every morning, shout out to the Daily Republic. Every morning they drop a bundle of newspapers on my step with a, I mean, with a paper telling me it was uh, it had like any changes to the route. You know, whether somebody dropped off, whether somebody was added on. Man, I had to roll all the newspapers, rubber band them, put them in my pouch, hop on my bike, deliver them. No boss standing over my shoulder making sure I did it. I was 11, y'all. I mean, 11 had no idea this was shaping the way I thought you were supposed to get work done. I mean, that's what I thought. Get it done. Don't wait for somebody else to tell you to do it. Excellent handyman experience. If you ask me, I mean, I don't know how I can get better than that. It was one of the reasons why I knew I could go work for myself because I've been a self starter for the longest. Another part of the job was collecting money. Yes, believe it or not. They sent 11 year olds door to door collecting subscription money. This wasn't in the fifties people. This was the nineties. After I collected all the money, they let me know how much of it I needed to send to them. And I kept the rest as my pay. As Randy Moss would say, straight cash, homie. By the way, I need to tell y'all, everybody subscribe y'all. Like I told you, we do, we, we, it's a movement over here. I want to get as many of the youngsters out here and anybody who's on the fence about trying to start one of these businesses. I'm going to get you in the game. I'm going to get you in the game. I'm going to give you all the information you need to know. And we're going to get you motivated over here. So man, let's go, man. Like I said, hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment, like, you know, hey, let's let's help get this thing to the top. Now back to what I was saying. I was fully responsible for all the money. So when I got that straight cash, then I couldn't just take it and go to the mall with it and just, you know, splurge and do whatever I wanted. I had to be responsible. I had to, you know, make sure that I had, I sent them their cut and that I had mine left over, which I mean, if you think about it now, I got to do the same thing. I got to separate the taxes overhead. So, you know, I get the money from the customer. I can't just get the money. And it's just like, Oh, look at all this cash. Look at all these monies. No, I got to put some to the side. I got to put some in other departments or other sections for overhead and different expenses. Also, just collecting money from customers in general could be difficult when you first start. I mean, some people think, you know, I mean, it's, you think just, you know, I, I do a job, I'm gonna just go collect the money, you know, cause it's my, you know, it's my money, you know, after I did the job. I mean, that's one thing, but it's something like, you know, sometimes when you don't have that experience, you're in somebody else's house and you gotta go tell them that, hey, this repair I just made, yeah, it was a half an hour. And I, uh, so I need $400. And they, you know, you're going to have something that's going to feel some kind of way about it, but it's just part of it. It's just something that you need to know. So, I mean, you know, I mean, who knew? I mean, at the time when I think back to it, who, who knew I was getting all this training when I was 11 for a business, I wouldn't start for another 28 years. That, and that's what I'm saying. Like, don't discount your past experiences. Like. You, I mean, you really don't know. I mean, you, you might know. I mean, and I, I want you to just really think back 
It might not have been a job. It might have been an activity. It could have been a group that you were part of. Something that you did that you now looking back realize, man, that, that set the stage for me. That's experience. It's experience. It might not have been like, I didn't grow up in a house where we were always fixing things. And I didn't grow up. My father used to work on the cars because he was military. So we didn't, he, you know, we didn't have to really work on the housing or we lived in apartments. And of course, apartments had their own maintenance, but you know, he would work on the car. So, you know, there were things like that, that I learned along the way, but we didn't really have to do a lot of work in the house. So, and honestly, I didn't learn a lot of that till I got my own house. And then even further, I didn't learn a lot of it until I started doing it until I started doing it as a business. I do a lot of crown molding now. And I said in the previous video that I didn't know how to do crown. I would never did finish carpentry, but what I did, like I, I said, I bought broken pieces of crown from Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever, you know, uh, and, and I bring it home and you just cut a piece off and you do it again and you do it again. And then I learned how to, you know, that's how I learned how to cope. And I learned how to get the corners tight and I learned how to, you know, uh, use a coping saw. And then, you know, it's just, I just practiced on my own. There, a lot of these things, you know, you can learn on your own. <laughs> you can learn on your own. We've been conditioned to need a classroom setting. We've been conditioned to have to have somebody with us holding our hand the whole time. That's not necessarily the case. Sometimes, it, you know, we got to go back, reach back to the, the old school guys that, you know, where, you know, might, it might've been the guys in the neighborhood, something was broke. They all got together and figured out how to fix it. You know, uh, my guy, uh, Mike Sneed over at Appliance Bootcamp, he, he talks about this and I'm in total agreement. Uh, about how, you know, there was a time that people just figured things out. So you're going to be able to figure out the technical side of it. I mean, it just depends on how you want it, you know, if that's what you want to do. But, you know, this, the, the, there are other things that, that might come from your past experiences that, you know, they're a little harder to come by on the experience side. Um, another example, when I was 12, I started going door to door, raking leads for money. Once again, no boss, just me getting it done. The future handyman business experience I took from this was acceptance of rejection. <laughs> Bruh. Hey y'all, man, I got pro I probably got rejected 90% of the time and it just didn't phase me. I mean, I was 12. I wasn't thinking of it like that. I was going up to a door, I knock, somebody says, Nah, we're good. Oh, okay. All right, cool. You know, and I just put, have my headphones on, go down the street to the next house. Dude, I mean, I think about it now, I mean, it was just so much rejection and I just ate it like a chant and didn't even think about it. It was just, to me, it was just, it's just what happens. It's just part of it, right? Well, now that I got older and you know, I'm, I'm doing this as a full-time business, it's the same thing. You know, I, I go and I put out estimates and whether people do them or not, I can't, I'm not, you know, pocket watching customers. I don't, you know, I don't know what their, their situation is with their money. They, they might have it. They might, they might've thought it was, it was going to be less. They don't, you know, how do you know if you don't do the business every day, you don't know. So it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me one bit <laughs> if somebody rejects uh, one of mine. Cause I feel like eventually somebody's going to want me to uh, do this work. You know, um, and that's, a, that's something from when I was 12, man, I have absolute confidence that I'm gonna get work from, from, you know, from a, a, a thing I decided to do when I was 12 handyman experience. Sometimes you'll learn a lot about yourself while you're doing something that you might not like to do, but you don't even know that until you try. Right. I mean, what if I would have out of the gate when I was 18, started the handyman business. I mean, maybe I would have got super lucky finding something that I really enjoyed and loved doing, but you don't know, you know, I could have tried anything and I did. I told y'all oh, I'm the king of the proletariat. All right. The head of the working class. I understand the plight of the working class. I had over 20 jobs, man, trying to figure this thing out. And one of those jobs I did, everybody used to talk about working at plants. And I wouldn't work at a plant because it was considered good, stable work. You can make good money back in, in the, back in the day, you know, and like I said, in like the nineties, like the late nineties was like my, 
when I really started working. Um, and <laughs> I went and worked at a plant. I, they, they assigned me to in the box folder machine where all I did, I put flat cardboard in the machine and the machine would do all the work. It would open the box up. It would tape the bottom. Then I would tape, take those folded boxes from the machine, put them on a conveyor belt and push them down the line. So the other employees down the line could pack the boxes with product. Essentially, I took empty boxes off the machine and put them on a conveyor belt for eight hours a day. Man, I'm trying to tell you by day four, I was ready to jump in the machine and just let it turn me into a box. Just an empty box. I just, I was like, just I, that'll be more fun. This is ridiculous. I was, I did it for one more day because I started on a Tuesday, went to a Friday. I said, let me just I'll take the weekend and let me see what happens. I came back Monday. I was like, nope, <laughs> this is, I'm going to have a breakdown. And it was just, you know, it taught me that I'm not built to do monotonous work. And I had another, a couple other jobs that were similar, but that was probably the worst one. You know, I worked in call centers and I, I mean, like I said, I, I've done a little bit of everything. That was the one though, that really taught me that monotonous work is not my thing. Also, I'm gonna start putting affiliate links in the description and I just need to remember to say it. I always forget to say it, that anything you see me use, uh, these are products I use that I bought out of my pocket that I love. So I'll put the affiliate links in the description if it's something that you see that you like. Hey man, uh, check it out. And oh, uh, I think I have to say that I, I, if you click on the link, I might earn a little bit of a commission, but it has nothing to do with uh, how much you pay. All right. But anyway, but yeah, I'm not, and I'm not knocking anybody that does plant work or anything like that. Cause like I said, I felt the same when I did customer service. It's just monotonous work. I just, I'm just, I just wasn't built for it, but I didn't, I wouldn't have known that. And to me, that's experience. That's just experience that I had that let me know that like, this is perfect for me. The handyman business. I, I tell you, I thought about it before where, you know, could I do, I know there's a lot to it, you know, being an electrician or being a plumber, but I, I just love the fact that just like you see in this video, I say, now I'm doing this trim on this wall. You know, I did the, you know, you, I'm going to be painting in a little while. I ran a wire, got this TV centered perfectly on this wall, put up a floating shelf. I, and I didn't, what you didn't see is I also put a ceiling fan up in here and I put, uh, pictures up on the walls all around, you know, on the side, all the side walls, um, in the closet, in the same room, I put up new shelving, you know, um, like custom closet shelving only in the handyman business. Can you do all these different things? But you don't have to know how to do them all when you first start. Um, my, you know, my guy, Alan, you know, I don't know him, but I, I love his channel. Uh, he's over at the YouTube handyman spelled with a U. Um, he had a video talking about, you know, starting a handyman business with no experience needed. You can absolutely do that because you don't have to start out doing everything and you don't even have to end up doing everything. You can just pick off the low hanging fruit. Like I, I said before, if I could have started it back, maybe when I was 20, I, maybe I would just do assembly. And that would have got me, like I said, that would have paid me just doing assembly in my twenties would have got me way more than as far as money than any job that I was doing. Um, you know, appliance repair that, I mean, you could, you could you make all kinds of money in appliance repair. And you know, this thing, the thing that you can learn, you got to learn how to be self-taught man and, and stop waiting on somebody else to teach you everything. So I totally agree. You can, you can start this business with no experience, pick off low hanging fruit and then build as you go. First started, I had no plans on doing drywall. I was really just going to do tile and flooring. And I ended up getting so many requests for drywall that I just had no choice but to learn how to perfect it. I don't care if you get a, a sheet of drywall and bust 15 holes in it and just and, and put it in your room and figure out how to fix it. Th you do that until you get it perfected. That's, you know, it's just, it's just what it is. I had no, you know, painting, I had to learn. So there's a lot of things you can do, but you can get into this game with no experience. Um, and the experience that you do have from your past, don't discount it, man. Cause there's this, there's this much larger, this, this handyman thing is much larger than just, just the actual physical work that you're going to do. Look at this room, man. It's a beautiful thing. I'm trying to tell you.
I love it, man. Look at all those different aspects. They all come together and boom. Customer loved it, man. Hey, watch this video over here or this playlist I'm gonna put up on the, on the side. Subscribe, stay safe and be blessed.